siblings do you have? One, maybe three, or maybe even none. Whenever asked this exact question, I think and ponder, what do I answer? Hi, I'm Mackenzie Moyes, and I am a twinless twin. Now, I don't blame you if you don't recognise the term twinless twin. I mean, how can a twin not have a twin? Twinless twins or lone twins are a pair of siblings who were once twins. However, due to the unfortunate event of one sibling passing, the surviving twin is now forced to navigate life solo. My twin sister passed at the early age of two days old, so me being an infant, grief didn't affect me in my early years. However, as I've grown and developed an understanding of my life, I realise I really do notice her absence more than you would think. Now, don't get me wrong, I do miss her, but when I think about it deep down, it's bittersweet. I'm so grateful for the life that I've had, but what if it was even better with her by my side? Holidays are never quite the same after someone we love dies, whether that be a birthday or Christmas celebration. One less seat at the dinner table, or one less gift to buy or make can serve as jarring reminders of how our lives have been forever changed. For myself, and many other twinless twins around the world, birthdays are like a double-edged sword. It's a celebration, but you can't help but remember that there should be two people celebrating. I was with my twin for two days, premature in the NICU, also known as a neonatal intensive care unit. My twin sister Paige was born with a condition called hypoplastic left heart syndrome. This is a rare congenital heart defect in which the left side of the heart is severely undeveloped and incapable of supporting systematic circulation. During adolescence, our brains undergo significant changes, especially in areas responsible for emotional processing and regulation. This period marks a crucial stage in growth, with the prefrontal cortex developing alongside the limbic system, which is known for processing emotions and memories. This developmental stage can intensify emotional experiences, including grief, as adolescents learn to navigate these complex feelings while forming their identities, providing a safe space for them to express their feelings, offering guidance on coping mechanisms, and even validating their experiences can help them a great deal more than you may think it will. We also need to remember that children articulate we also need to remember that children express their grief differently than adults. They may not have the words to articulate their feelings, but their behaviours and emotions often speak volumes. They might seem withdrawn, act out, or show changes in eating and sleeping patterns. Understanding that these reactions are normal is crucial and supporting them is the first step to helping them navigate grief's complexities. Research indicates that children who experience the death of a parent or sibling before turning 18 are at increased risk of developing mental health disorders such as depression and anxiety. One study found that one in three children who experience parental death one study found that children who experience the death of a parent or sibling are more than three times as likely to experience these mental health disorders compared to those who would not experience such a loss. In the words of Thomas Wilder, it's hard to turn the page when you know someone won't be in the next chapter, but the story must go on. Standing here today, I carry the weight of her absence, but also the strength of her silent encouragement. Each step I take, each challenge I overcome, I do so not just for myself, but for the both of us. Her short yet significant existence fuels my journey, reminding me to turn the page and continue our story with resilience and hope. When you care for someone who is going through this terrible process of losing someone, it really is more about listening to them and identifying where they're at in their learning than it is about trying to make them feel better. The point is not to cheer them up. The point is to be there for them and let them know that you'll be there and that you can imagine a future for them where they're not constantly being knocked over by these waves of grief. In year six, 2021, it felt surreal. I had only a few more months until I was in high school, but it felt wrong. I had handing in one enrollment form, just wasn't right. At such a young age, I couldn't understand and it seemed so unfair to me. I've got a twin, so where is she? Being a twinless twin is a unique and deeply challenging experience. Losing a twin feels like losing a part of yourself, as twins often share an incredibly close bond from birth. 
This bond isn't just emotional, it's almost instinctual, like having a mirror reflecting your own existence. Without your twin, you may feel a profound sense of emptiness or even disorientation, like a piece of your identity is missing. Also, when you lose someone at such a young age, your upbringing is full of curiosity about that person because you never got to meet them. I sometimes wonder what her favourite flavour of cake would be. Perhaps vanilla, or would she be a chocolate girl? I wonder what sports she'd play. Would she play netball with me or pursue something else? Would she be taller than me? I was older, so hopefully not. <laughs> would she prefer cats or dogs? I prefer dogs, but these are the questions that always go forever unanswered. It's commonly dismissed in today's society the intensity of grief among youth. Society often expects people to move on quickly after a loss, which can make this grieving even harder. This pressure can make people feel like their ongoing pain is invalid. To help those who are going through this terrible process of losing someone, we need to talk about grief more openly and with compassion. By having these conversations, we can create a more understanding environment where people feel comfortable sharing their feelings and getting the support they require. Something those going through grief need to remind themselves is just as you know your thoughts cannot bring this person back to life, your thoughts did not cause them to pass. Sometimes these thoughts don't seem so powerful in our head, but when spoken out loud, others may understand it a great more deal than it seems like they will. One quote by Jodie Carrington really stuck out to me, and that was, if you're old enough to love, you're old enough to grieve. This reminds us that grief isn't reserved for adults or for those with a lifetime of memories. When a child loses someone or something they love, their grief is just as real and significant as that of an adult. We must understand and recognise these feelings, understanding that their grief is a natural response to their loss. Growing up as a twinless twin has been an emotional journey. I often think about what life would have been like with Paige by my side, sharing experiences, milestones and achievements together. Her absence is a void that I feel keenly, a constant reminder of what could have been. Living without my mirror, the person who would have understood me in so many ways no one else can, has shaped who I am today. So when asked how many siblings I have, I proudly answer two. I have an older sister and a twin sister named Paige. And while Paige is not physically here with me, she will always be a part of my life and my story. Thank you.